Psalm 2. Verse 1, the Passion Translation. How dare the nations plan a rebellion? King James says, the nations rage. Their foolish plots are futile. Look at how the power brokers of the world rise up to hold their summit as the rulers scheme and confer together against Yahweh and his anointed king, saying, let's come together and break away from the Creator. They're trying to do that these days, trying to get long life through all means available. Now they're trying to program the AI and get all the information in there from all the creation. It's all stolen. I know there's a joke getting around once about, you know, this atheist uh, thinking he's so good with his technology and everything else and having an argument with God. I don't know how the story goes, but anyway, God says, well, you go find your own dirt if you want to do that. <laughs> Amen. Not using mine. Everything we see, everything's visible, even invisible, uh, comes from God. It's a futile attempt to overthrow God. Lucifer tried that once. And it's been fallen ever since. And his one third of the host that fell with him conjured up a plan to overthrow God. It was futile. The plan to overthrow God's plan in the end is going to be just as futile. They're a laughing stock, really. It's against Yahweh and his anointed king. He's against God, against his anointed saying, let's come together and break away from the Creator. Once and for all, let's cast off these controlling chains of God and His Christ. These globalists are struggling with their plan. There's been lots of prophetic words and lots of different words spoken, some true, some not, some half true, some three quarters true about what's going to happen. And, and you can tap into the enemy's plans and start to speak that out. It's a truth, meaning that's what they want to do and it will happen if there's not a turning. But the truth is what God's heart and God's intentions are. That's the truth. So we have to sharpen up with the prophetic words. God and throne merely laughs at them, at them and their plane. The sovereign one mocks their madness. Then with the fierceness of his fiery anger, he settles the issue and terrifies them to death with these words, I myself have poured out my king on Zion, my holy mountain. Jesus Christ was anointed. He had unlimited grace, unlimited anointing. We saw what he did, his works, his fearlessness, his total dominion over the governments, the evils, the religions, total He wasn't even so much out to get him. He was fulfilling whatever God said, the plan and purpose of God. But they were out to get him the whole time, but they couldn't get him. In fact, he always threw it back on them and shown them for who they were, snakes and vipers and religious. Outwardly looking good, but inwardly full of dead man's bones. He offended them all the time. He angered them. He frustrated their plan. And the same God laughs and mocks at the plans, the futile plans of man, the fallen angels through men. And some men's hearts are so wicked, they're actually joined with them and they're becoming like demons inside through their covenants of blood and through the sacrificing and things like this. And they're unsavable. Many of them are not savable. They cannot be prayed into the kingdom. They've passed the tipping point. Some we cannot pray for. And God will rejoice at their fall. Oh, you can't rejoice. You must be sorrowful. Now, some you will not sorrow. Remember Aaron's sons when they fell. God said to Moses, don't weep for them. Don't mourn them. They got their just due. They were coming against God, coming against his anointed, coming against the kingdom with knowledge. It's different if you're totally ignorant, wouldn't have a clue what's going on. But many of these people, these world rulers, know what's going on. They know about the one in the heavens. They know he's the true creator. They've learned that the false way is Lucifer, but through lust and pride and thinking they can have a kingdom of their own, they'll just play on. If you haven't done the right thing, but God and done the wrong thing because you want your own will, you magnify that a thousand times, two thousand times, ten thousand times. You start to get a glimpse of where these guys are at. They're wicked. Not to mourn them. And God poured out the Spirit on Jesus without measure. 
And because he spoke the words of God, he only did the work and will of God. And God was enabling the spirit put out without measure. And on the holy mountain, on the mountain of the Lord, where the church is rising into a glorious church, person by person, just small beginning. I will reveal the eternal purpose of God. For he has decreed over me, you are my favoured son. So the son has had this decreed. And the son is decreeing it over the sun's rising. You are my favoured son, and as your father I have crowned you as my king eternal, king of kings, lord of lords. It's not just the king, it's not just the lord, it's kings and lords that God wants as this government of this mountain. And as your father I have crowned you as my king eternal. Today I became your father because Jesus did die, right? Deaths. Physical, spiritual. Sad story. I mean, it uh, is more horrific than we can ever know. But he was birthed with the Spirit of God and come bursting up out of the grave. Ask me to give you the nations and I will do it. And they shall become your legacy. So this people rising, God wants us to know his purpose and his plan. He wants us to have kingdom-minded Plans going forward. Coming out of the church age into the kingdom age. It's not about churches and buildings and what we can do in big ministries, small ministries, and how we can reach the lost. That's there, but it's already in the foundation. Don't think I look how to do all that again. That's all established. We have to go on and build the kingdom. God wants his government on the earth. He wants his government to start rising. And eventually we know the king himself in person will be on, you know, in Jerusalem. But there's a rising of the government. First, he's coming back to a glorious church that, has, that have the government and the dominion and the control. Been somewhat different from what we've learned. You know, which, what's true, what's half true. We're just going to have to go with it. You'll shepherd them with unlimited authority. Say so what? I thought he was the only one with unlimited anointing. Unlimited anointing. Anointing comes with authority. Anointing all comes with the crowning of authority. Unlimited anointing is because Jesus has unlimited authority. So what's this unlimited authority? There's going to be unlimited anointing. Glory, like this earth has never seen. Not just on Jesus, but on many. And the globalist elites are terrified of this. They've seen it once before. They've seen little glimpses through other people, but not like on that one. Satan remembers that one. That one totally bamboozled him. There's nothing he could do until Jesus gave up his life. Jesus gave it up. They didn't kill him. We didn't kill Jesus. He gave it up. Even though he was killed and slaughtered, he he allowed it. You know what I mean? He gave it up. He gave them the, the chance, the authority. And at any time, he could have called legions of angels from his father. Could have delivered him off the cross. God would have healed him. Because he never broke the covenant. Perfect. God, Jesus Christ, kept the covenant. Completely. He yielded totally to his father. This is why the Abrahamic covenant was so strong. Because Abraham was a foreshadowing. And uh, he took his son that he loved. The promised child. You know, had to wait a hundred years for this one. This is no ordinary child. And him and mum loved the boy. And I don't think we could imagine what it must have been like. But he went through with it. The next morning early he rose to fulfill it. <coughs> taking his son to sacrifice him. Because his love and trust was totally in the covenant Abraham was. Abraham understood what the covenant was. God come and rescue him. I'll make you father of nations. I'll do this. I'll do that. And in the covenant you'll do this. And you'll obey me fully. See there's a covenant at work here. In the earth. Jesus fulfilled it. We are to learn it, to understand it and fulfill it. But Satan wants the covenant to be muddied and the words to be wrong or misunderstood at least or to be twisted at best so that we'll never understand it so therefore we can't fully obey it. 
Satan only tempted Jesus with the scripture. He didn't tempt him with lies. He tempted him with scripture. But the temptations were away from the will and purpose and plan. You know, God's going to shake us up because you can't think, well, there's a, there's a scripture in First John that says, test the spirits. If you ask most people, even me, you know, some time back, I'd know better now. Well, how do you test the spirits? If it's a true prophetic word and all that, well, you take it to the Bible and all that. But what if you don't understand the Bible? What if angels misquote it to you? Huh? Are we that smart? It can work. But what does the scripture say? That spirit, you've got, you got to ask them, did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? Yeah. Huh? Did he come in the flesh? They'll shrink away, get angry, or just go silent, or clear out. There's ways to do it that we have to learn and get back to the basics. They'll, not, they'll never confess Jesus Christ came in the flesh. They'll never confle- confess and admit that God came to the earth in the flesh as a man. It's the test. These wicked ones won't do it either. They won't. The demons definitely won't. The fallen angels won't. And neither will the wicked. They might call him a prophet or a good man and all that. Wasn't that what Judas Iscariot said? He is a righteous man. Well, that wasn't enough to get him saved. Knowing he's a righteous man, that was evident. He was wicked. Wicked. In his inside. Choices were made against the Lord and against his anointed. You know, as people start dying and popping off around the world, um, there'll be at times God will, have, will pull us up and say, Don't mourn, don't mourn. I think, apparently, from what I've heard, not knowing all the backstories and everything, because I'm not in the military, the armed forces, God hasn't spoken to me much about this. Little bits uh, to keep me cued, but not. A little cute, not big cute, not queuing on, cued, right, of what's going on. But uh, much of the preparing is for the church, but also preparing for the governments as they're getting set up natural and spiritual, spiritual governments, but also the natural governments, which has a spiritual aspect to it too. The church and government should work together, mm-hmm. uh, not separate it. Yep. But Trump also has to be understand God's justice and be willing to carry it out. Trump, since in his office, one of his things was there'll be no war. There'll be no. He doesn't even want to, He doesn't even want dying. But there's going to have to be some dying, because some of these wicked people aren't going to turn. And he that sits in the heaven laughs at them because he knows their end is coming. Their plans are futile. Their efforts will be stopped. They will not have their one world government. It will be Jesus's one world government, with kings. And lords. It'll be God's government. One world government. One universe government. Universal. Go out into the whole universe. Forever. Amen. His kingdom has no end. It's not this one world government with the antichrist and false prophet deceiving everybody and taking all their money and building their bunkers and then blow the world up. We'll hide underground until all the dust settles and we'll come out and make a new race. That plan is futile. It's not going to work. Let me say it again. That plan is futile and it's not going to work. Amen? Many Christians think it's going to work. They're afraid about it. They confess it day and night. This is what they're doing. Look out. We've got to get ourselves prepared. Buy more beans and get underground. There's, if God leads that way, that's what we'll do. But it's not because we're afraid. It's because of where he leads. It's okay to store up some food. It's okay to be Joseph's and get prepared. For famines. Because as the Lord shows us. We're not supposed to be following demons. We're not supposed to be following the globalists. We're supposed to be following the Lord and his anointed. Serve and worship the awe-inspiring God. Not worshipping every thought, plan, purpose of the wicked. We're not to focus on the wicked. But on God who sits in the heavens and laughs. When your focus is there, we'll get laughing with him. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Recognize his greatness. There has to be a recognition. Now, many folks may recognize God's greatness, but then they keep saying about what the devil's doing. Well, what they're really saying is, well, I know he's great, but the devil's he's bigger and he might go boo at any moment. We're doomed. What am I going to do? I'm scared. Well, okay. God's not going to condemn you for being scared. Better off you admit it. But get your focus on the bold lion, ruler, king, the righteous one, 
recognize his greatness and bow before him, trembling with reverence in his presence. The only trembling that's going to come in the days to come, we can start practicing it, is trembling in his presence or trembling at his word. God's word. Not trembling at demons. You know, they're putting across the television screen some of these big old ones coming down, they're flying saucers and crashing and coming out and the big tall things creeping out, big black eyes and they come and appear beside people's cars and look in there and people get terrified. <sighs> Hearts failing them for fear about what's coming on earth and flying saucers coming past giants scaling the mountains and throwing machinery across the jungles. They're coming for us. They're coming for us. Or we look to the one who's coming for them. You know, where's our focus? Uh, Remember King David? Oh, you forgot that story already. (laughs) We've got to remind ourselves of who is in the heavens laughing. Yeah. The king, little David, the pretty one, not the big one, not the handsome one. Or oh, Psalm 151 said that's been, you know, found and never ever gets in the Bible. Or, uh, but it was written by the king. Never made it in there. Psalm 151, they called it. I read it to you last week or week before. David said, "I took away disgrace from Israel when I chopped his head off. The giant's head, the half breed's head. You know, these guys just aren't big." They, they got angel tech in them. Luke seen them in dreams years ago. Massive. Intelligence. But it's nothing compared to God. It's no intelligence compared to God. They, may, they might ring, run rings around us in our human mind, but we haven't got the human mind. We're going to come out of that into the mind of Christ. We'll start to have his thoughts after him. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. We're going to have to come out, come up to the highway of thinking, And it's only found in the highway of holiness. And it's only found as we go upwards, which I'm learning about. That very, very few have. Enoch ascended. Elijah ascended. Others will ascend. Others have over um, the millennia. Even in Jesus' time, some come out of the graves, got their bodies, walked around. And what what can you do from them? You can't bury them again. They're in heaven with their glorified bodies. There's, There's a number of them. I don't know how many. First fruits. Why did they live hundreds and hundreds of years in the beginning? Oh, well, it's a different world. It cannot be random. Well, there's probably more to it. There was a pureness. The wages of sin is death. Not the canopy around in the world, life. The wages of sin is death. In him is life and there is no death. Some of the ancient Jewish People and writings believe that Adam, I think Eve struggled for a while, but he didn't never sinned again. Imagine that. I mean, it was such a shock to the system, but he stayed close to God and knew his ways. Remember, he did it willingly. So he, he uh, grieved the loss terribly for some time. It took him a long time to, and tried to take his life many times. He just could not handle the grief, him and his wife. There's stories about this. Hidden. Why? If you find out about that, you might know there is a way we can get clean again. Not just theoretically through the blood of Jesus. Thank God for it. It's not a theory, it's a reality. But just not that's enough. No, we've got to go all the way. Get back to the holy way again. There's been such a regression that at the end we see through the scriptures that men will be lovers of themselves and it won't be God's will anymore. It'll be their will superseding. Back to God's will, back to his kingdom. What does he want? Where does he want us to be? What does he want us to do? Who does he want us to see? He tells us to stay put, we'll stay put. Go, we'll go. Stay, we'll stay. Build, we'll build. Remain, don't build, we won't build. That's what the kingdom builders will be like, I think, in the future. Because they'll be trembling in, in reverence to God. They'll full face down before him and kiss the sun before his anger is roused against you. These guys have had chance after chance after chance, years and years and years to get clean and right, and some of them are coming out. Some of them are fessing up. This is where a lot of information is getting out through the internet and different things. Some of them are coming clean and getting saved. It's possible to be saved before they get to that tipping point. God knows this is God's business. And they fell down before God in repentance, and they're working on the right side. Remember that his wrath can be quickly kindled. We don't know when his wrath will be kindled and then... You know, the great shakings will come on the earth. 
But many blessings are waiting for all who turn aside to hide themselves in Him. That's, that's where we focus. There's many blessings. Many blessings. Say many blessings. Many blessings. many blessings. many blessings waiting for all who turn aside to hide themselves in Him, whether we're large or small, new Christian, old Christian, young or old, 60 or 80. It makes no difference to God. No, absolutely zero difference. What your gender is, there are many blessings waiting. <laughs> There's a great transfer of wealth that's coming. It's just... Even the apostles are talking about it now. I hadn't heard them say it much, little bits. Now they're saying it a lot, but it's not automatic. There's obedience required for the Israelites coming out of Egypt. There was obedience. They had to get with Moses and follow the leaders. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't drop on you like, you know, ripe apples off a tree. And you're sitting down on the bench and oh, thank you, thank you, oh, thank you. Don't have to do nothing. Uh, there is a following up to Jesus. There is an expectation that God's been building for years now. And some are nowhere near that expectation. They think the enemy's about to take over, it's the end. And some are just excited about the day. Not excited about the trouble. Who can be excited about the wickedness in this world? You can't be excited about that. Goodness me, they're going insane. What they're trying to teach our kids and what they're trying to do with the, the, the gender movement and the, the woke. What did I hear that mean? Woke. What did that mean? You said it to me yesterday. Oh, yeah. I thought it was good. Better find out what that is. But it was just, uh, yeah, just believing, just believing lies. Yeah, it's actually making true everything that's not true. That's what the woke movement is. It's just anything that's not true. It's a lie. It's true. You can. You can. It's not woke. It's sleep. Liz, Liz, looking forward to help me out. So. We're going through Psalm 23. We're walking through the valley of the shadow of death where we'll fear no evil where his rod and staff's comfort in us. Woke. I never realised woke was an acronym. Willfully overlooking known evil. Woke. Willfully overlooking known evil. Thank you, Donna. Hallelujah. Where we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God never intends us to park up in the, in the valley. Rick Jonah talks about this. Brandon's been actually referring back and God's been showing him through some of Rick Jonah's teachings that this is where uh, Rick was taken, where he met Elijah and different ones like Enoch. And they were teaching him that there are many things through the valley, through the earth. The valley of the shadow of death is like the earth. The earth is the valley. You know, what good's down here except for God's kids? And God's anointing and precious Holy Spirit. You know, that's just, um, it's just evil everywhere. Thoughts of men are evil continually. Intentions are wrong. They might smile to your face. Ever heard the term smiling assassin? It's hard to tell. <laughs> we need the true spirit. We need the Lord to help us. In our business deals going forward. Don't trust. Trust God only. God will give us trustworthy people, but we have to trust him that he'll do it and wait for him to do it. God doesn't want the world managing our money, our homes, our properties. He doesn't want the world managing our schools anymore. He doesn't want the, the world managing the arts and what comes through on the television and internet and radio. He wants, to, he wants the whole thing taken over. He laughs because he knows that this is, this is an overtaking move coming up. Like the Trump. What's he, a third level chess player or something, or fourth level? What does that mean again, Luke? He's three, three or four steps ahead of his enemy. Do you think he's telling us on the airwaves what he's doing? There are hints for the wise, but the hints. We're just waiting for the, for the hammers to fall and for the plans to start coming to the populace. It is happening. God is at work. God is laughing because his plan will be the one that succeeds. We will win. Satan will lose and all his followers will lose. Come to the winning side. Come over to the side of the winners and leave the side of the losers. Now, even in Christendom, we have to leave the side of the losers. If all we can think of is our own ministry and how much money we're getting, the only question I ever get any more from people, how many souls you got, I don't even, I don't even look at them, I don't even answer them. How many souls you want, how many people in your church? Uh, for a start, it's none of the business, but uh, who cares? Huh? Yeah. How many of the souls you want are growing? Or well, they're just all as hypocritical as you, just looking at it all natural. 
We have to start looking and thinking of the kingdom and heaven. And what's the heart of the Father? To seek and to save the lost. To save and rescue them. Not just born again. That's great. Yes, that is step one. But rescue them from this darkness, from the confusion. So our children are not going to be slaughtered any longer. You know? We're supposed to own the car companies, the skyscrapers, the businesses. Not the globalists. You know? Not the Masons. Not the Illuminatis. Not the stars. The dark stars. Many of the Hollywood stars get to stardom through the dark side. Through covenants with darkness. And they become stars. But it's not the bright morning star. And they, call it, they even call through a lot of these secret societies the morning star. But it's not the bright morning star. It's a dark star. They are deceived. They're using God's plan and purpose for themselves. For self. For their own government. For their own system. And the ones at the very, very top that hide away are cowards. And all the others below are pawns. And they work for their overlords. And even above the overlords are fallen angels. And above all the fallen angels is Satan. That's all it is. It's just dark darkness. And Satan doesn't love any of them. And the fallen angels don't love any of the overlords. And the overlords don't love the pawns. They're just there to feed them and clothe them and fill their treasuries with more gold and more silver and more money and more food. And they belch out their profanity across the airwaves and think they run the world. It's not going to last. It's closing in on them. It's imploding. And we're being told to come out of any support of that. And Revelation talks about come out of the false church. Come out of any support. Any church that believes all this rubbish and all this wokeness. Like if a minister or a church or ministry has any sort of inkling towards the fairness of abortion or anything like that. You should, you should be allowed and we need to have equality and all this sort of stuff. Just run for your life. It's dying. It's going to all die. It's all going to come to an, an end. Because it's, it's not undergirded by life. It's definitely not supported by the master. It's all fake. It's all self-righteousness. Selfishness. Jesus said, how are you going to know? Yeah. We might be asking that question. He said, how are you going to know? And you've got to look at the fruits. The fruits of these evil ones, is bad. The poor keep getting poorer, don't they? And the rich keep getting richer. And the middle class work, work for the government, pay unjust taxes, get two jobs, they keep printing money. Where's it all go? To them. That's where it goes, to their evil practices. And we work harder to, to uphold the falling economic system that they, one day, want it to fall because they've got everything there. Well, let it all fall, we'll start a new one. We'll start a new one. We've got it all and we've got them too. Well, what they don't realise is they're losing many people. They're losing us quick smart because we're waking up, amen, to the king on his holy hill. And these systems are, are, are under judgment. The system's under judgment first. You know, John Enlow's been talking about that. The systems have to come under judgment, different prophets have been saying. And then, um, you know, the church will come under judgment. The nations aren't under judgment. I mean, they don't even know what they're doing. They don't know their right hand from their left. The sinner downtown don't know anything. A drug addict don't know anything. The judgment comes upon the systems and comes upon the crooked elites and down into the churches where they're working on the wrong side. First with those knowingly and then down to those who are getting awakened to it but still clinging to the old. You've got to let it go. You've got to let the old systems go and come out from among them and be separate. You know, I've had people come and, into this church before and say, sincerely, I believe what they said. Not once, not twice. I've had it happen numerous times. David, I like your message. I like what you teach. I believe you're a good man. I believe... You're doing the right thing. And I don't believe what we're doing is right, but I can't leave. I have to stay. Say what? 
They have to stay in the congregation of the dead. Why? Oh, good mum there, dad was there, grandma was there, grandma was there, and it's just a system, and we've got to honour that, we can't leave. It's like the family traditions. Jesus said, that's what makes the word of God of no effect, your tradition. Mm-hmm. Family tradition, Christian tradition, traditions in government, the traditions in how you eat and clean, and that, all those things, all traditions, traditional way of thinking. We have to be willing to let it go. Become the new creatures in thought, word, deed. Change our minds if we're wrong. But it's not easy to change our mind, is it? We've been talking about that because it butts up against the, the ego or the pride or what do people think. Or that'll, if I change, it means everyone's going to know that I was wrong. It's humbling to change. It takes effort, sometimes sacrifice, and could even lose some friends. Family might even think, you, that's it, knew it, finally flipped the lid. But you're just doing and following the Lord. You're just doing the truth. So, yeah, it might not be an easy road to leave. But when you leave, you have to cleave and cling. Don't look back like Lot's wife. Jesus said in the New Testament, remember. For Jesus to tell us to remember something, it must be important. Agree? The Lord King Jesus, remember Lot's wife. What did she do? She was rescued with Lot and with the daughters, two daughters, out of those that, the towns that God was about to destroy. It was only through Abraham's intercession because he was clueless about what was going to go on, Lot was. But he was righteous, you know, clean, good guy. His wife's heart was, was in a wrong place. She, just, she longed. She, she looked back longingly. She just she couldn't leave. So it's not just a physical leaving. You're going to have to disconnect. Make some choices, make some decisions. You may even be, have to be delivered from some demons. Devil. In me? Well, they're not in your hair. They're in there somewhere. You're complicated beings. What are they, my spirit? My born again spirit? It's not worth warring over. If they're in there, what do you want done from them? Ow. We don't want them. I don't want them. No. Well, what if they're just flying past and just landing on me for a while and take, I don't care what they're doing. I want it. I want in, out. I want on top, out. I want roundabout, out. Gone. Yeah, but and don't start that butt business. We're going to have to hear what the Lord is saying and, and remove. And just, he'll tr- treat each of us differently according to our faith, according to where we are, gently. But at times the removal won't be so gentle because it'll be like a tearing. You know? That's what the wife and husband have to do when they leave home. The Bible's very explicit about it. When you get married, you got to leave, have to leave your parents you might not leave the physical location. You may even live in the same house, but you're going to have to leave. The leaving is not necessarily physical. You're going to have to leave um, your connection somewhat. In some ways, there's a lot to this. But you're going to have to join to your spouse. The wife has to leave and cleave. It's called a cleaving, a clinging. You're going to have to cling to the husband. And the husband has to leave and cling. You can't have mum and dad in there telling you everything what to do, how to run your house and what to do, and how to take care of your kids, get their advice and all that. You see what I mean? Leave, cleave. Leave, cling. Lot's wife left, but she was still, still, still clinging on. Still clinging on. And what happened to her, whether it was the, you know, the nuclear waves come out or whether it was just, uh, yeah, whatever. Whether she just froze in terror by what she saw and then it all rained on her. We don't really know what happened. Well, we probably do, but I don't know. I don't understand it. But it doesn't matter. She was a pillar of salt. The Bible says she's a pillar of salt. Hallelujah. She wasn't in a good way. She never made it out. She froze where she was. Mm. And we don't want to freeze where we are. Knowing full well that God's moving on, but we're still clinging. When the fire moved on in the night time, even if it's at night, when he moves, we move. Pack up. Oh, it's night time, Moses. The fire's moving. Come on, get up. If the cloud moves in the daytime... The, the, the priests get the trump, the ram songs out, and brothers are like, let's have an afternoon cap. What's that? What's that? It means the cloud's moving. Everyone up? Yeah, but I haven't finished my nap. Got another round of canasta. <laughs> oh, but past the time I've got to read half hour of the Bible, I've got 15 minutes to go. The ram songs blowing, get up. Come on, otherwise the cloud's going to move, you're going to be left behind. There's certain things God is wanting to get us prepared for. So that when the mornings come, when the suns come, when the word comes, 
um, go ahead and do it. You know, the church has, for the most part now, doesn't really do what the minister says. Now, that can be because the ministers have been wrong a lot. Realise, letting this, the church astray. And many have left the church because, you know, I don't want to be beat up anymore. I don't want to be taught wrong. So they, it's, it's a mess that God is cleaning up. He's going to clean it up. But just because you've been hurt once doesn't mean you can't get healed of that and move on and follow someone. If you might have, you might have had a bad parent, doesn't mean there are bad parents everywhere. There are good parents too. Huh? God's a good father. He can be trusted. Holy Spirit mother, perfect, gentle. You follow the Holy Spirit. He or the Spirit of grace, he's not going to hurt you. Your angels aren't going to lead you the wrong way. What if it's the devil's leading? We're going to have to learn. Yeah. God won't, be, won't enable us to be tempted beyond what we're able, but with the temptation will show us a way of escape. It just may be, don't sin. Yeah, but I feel like sinning. Don't sin. You know, if you know you're about to fall over the cliff and there's flames down there, resist. Some, not only Jesus, but Jesus showed us the way by resisting to the point of droplets of blood. I, I don't think I've ever, ever come close to that. Mm. I've caved in way before and blood comes out. But I want to mature so that if it means obedience to the command to the point of blood coming out because of the pressure against the sin, I will not, um, that would be better. Some have. It's happened with others over the past, even in the modern generation. Some have bled because they refused to sin. That's called righteousness. That's not called religion. That's called the right thing. That's good. That's okay. It's okay to be rigid. And um, you can be rigid and staunch and happy and at peace. But I'm not going that way. In the name of Jesus, I'm going the way of the Lord. We're going the way of the Master. Everybody agree? Say amen. Amen.